customer lifetime value is the profit of the past by customer plus the profit of the future by customer. You accumulate uh, the profits of the past and the future and they have the overall value customer is generating over his lifetime. That is why we come back to the idea of customer relationship or duration. Remember, the past duration is known, but the future duration is unknown. It can only be, only be bordered with probability. So let's have a look on customer lifetime value. So we have the past value, as I just stated. It's how much profit the customer generated in the past. It's the actual value. We accumulate also what the customer has spent actually today. This brings the sum of profits of the past and the present. Well, so what the customer has spent over the time since he's active in the database. And so since his past first purchase, this is are the profits that are generated since the customer has come into uh, the database. And to that you add the potential value, how much profit the customer will generate in the future. If it is easy to operationalize the past value and the actual value, because you only need to grasp, grasp the data in the internal database, the accounting department, it is difficult to operationalize uh, the future value. Because this means you have to know what is the value of the customer in the future. Nobody knows. You cannot know. Because uh, there are so many un uh, uncertainties. Are probabilities of charm, so you don't know. Huh? Remember the framework I showed you, and you don't know with a big question mark, you don't know uh, if the customer is still active tomorrow, in one week, in one month, in one year. There are too many factors that you cannot control. He might move, he might uh, uh, lose the need, he might go to competitors. In the same sense, you cannot know how uh, if he increases or decreases the purchase for you. Three different unknown variables. Customer activity, is he still active or not? Is he active? Uh, does he still continue to buy so with which frequencies? Uh, so we have to calculate probabilities for the frequencies and for the amount. The question is, is the amount staying stable? Is it decreasing or is the amount increasing? So these are yeah, the activity indexes, uh, but you have, uh, there are other factors that might influence the activity, such as cross and upselling potential, which means that if he continues to buy, he might switch all his or her expenditures from competitors, brands or stores, or vice versa. He might also spend more money in the competitors. They have to integrate also cross and upselling potentials, which are uh, realist and uh, their reactivation. There might also come customers that might reappear. And so all this cannot be controlled. That is why you need sophisticated statistical model. You need uh, uh, statisticians uh, or econometric modelers, yeah, kind of regression modeling, uh, to make it probabilities that the customer is still active or reactivated in order to see uh, what is the probability of charm, uh, what is the probability of purchase frequencies, what is the probability of evolution of the market. This all you integrate. And what is the cross potential, uh, uh, cross selling and upselling potential? It's summarized here. So customer lifetime value is are the accumulated past and future profits in the firm, past revenues, minus past cost, minus the acquisition cost. Acquisition, it costs money. To integrate also the cost of acquisition, address rental, uh, communication campaigns, uh, or gifts you might give uh, for, for acquisition, for customer acquisition. And so these are all uh, values that, that you have to integrate into, into customer lifetime value calculation. Oh. It's the sum between the past revenues, the future revenues, minus acquisition cost, minus past retention cost, uh, minus the future retention cost. In other words, revenues minus cost are the profits, and so past profits plus future profits. One example, for example, you have customer one who purchases uh, or has a profit by of 100 euro per month. He bought over the last 10 years, and he has a 50% probability to stay another 10 years. And so we will generate 10 years multiplied 100 euros or dollar by 12. This is the past, huh? so 12,000 euros profit of the past, plus 10 years or years, uh, the same amount, the same month, but it has a churn rate of 50%, uh, so plus 6,000 euros, and so 
this customer would have a lifetime value of uh, 18,000, uh, uh, 12,000 plus 6,000. But this model is simplistic. I only take, took into account the churn rate, the activity rate. A sophisticated model is, uh, should, as I just stated, integrate the evolution of the amounts, amount, purchase amount, and evolution of the purchase frequencies, decrease stable uh, stability or uh, increase in order to have a real, realistic lifetime uh, value. This is only an example to show you simply how it works, but in reality it's much more sophisticated. And it's based, if you, you analyze the past data, you might analyze socio-demographical data, uh, for example age or position in your life cycle, in order to see if you are um, in danger of defection and how your expenditures might evolve. Take an example in the banking industry. Uh, if I would do this calculation for my customer database with you, uh, then I would see your students, uh, and uh, this is an indicator that the spendings will increase in the future. Because once you will work, you will have a salary, and you will earn more money. Uh, then, in my customer lifetime ca uh, value calculation, this indicator that you are a student would be an indicator that I have growing expenditures, growing purchase frequencies, uh, and uh, activities. On the other hand, if I did the same analysis years of uh, senior, then there would be probably decreasing expenditures, frequencies, and uh, decreasing lifetime. Right? So you can also have also to integrate in this modeling explanatory variables which are more related to customer life cycles uh, uh, in the life, uh, such as social social demographical. One method is what survival analysis uh, or a Cox regression, where you can calculate based on explanatory variables like for regression model. Uh, you can integrate explanatory behavior variable, frequencies, amounts, and recencies. So you can use even the RFM rule. And you can integrate all variables such as life cycles, uh, social demographical data, and so on. Customer lifetime value is important to do segmentations for resource allocation. Because you know that uh, this, if a customer has a high CLV, like as we have seen, the question is to which customer should we orientate resources? Uh, we should do it to big, to huge customers, heavy customers, customers having a big potential. The whole thing of CLV calculation is useful for resource allocation decisions. In other words, to which customer should we prioritize uh, the resource, resources allocation. But customer lifetime value is also part to show the potential, the importance of good clients.